Hey, it's Candy. Did you know that I have a quiz to help coaches choose their niche? Yeah, I do. It's super popular and it has been taken more than 20,000 times. This is a fun quiz that takes you about two minutes to do, and it will probably give you way more clarity on choosing your best coaching niche. So now whether you say niche or niche, it's going to work for you. And if you're a coach and you have been stuck in niche indecision, wondering what to do, then you should take my quiz and find out what you learn. You can take the quiz today at coachnichequiz.com. That's coachnichequiz.com. Okay, let's dive into this week's episode. Welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I'm your host, Candy Motzek, and I'm going to help you find the clarity, confidence, and courage to become the coach that you are meant to be. If you're a new coach, or if you've always wanted to be a life coach, then this is the place for you. We're going to talk all about mindset and strategies and how to, because step by step only works when you have the clarity, courage, and confidence to take action. Let's get started. Hello, dear listener. Gosh, I'm so glad you're here. You know, it's funny. Every single time I am asked to speak on a summit or guest on another podcast, they're almost always asking me to talk about imposter syndrome. And I think it's because coaches, consultants, online entrepreneurs, all of us. It's something that we're all so deeply affected by. So I thought I would share part of a presentation that I gave a couple of weeks ago. So let's dive in. So why do I talk about imposter syndrome? Like, why me? Well, there are a few reasons. First, I am ambitious, and I was often the first or the only in my position. I was the first woman at that boardroom table. I was the first woman of color in my engineering class. So it was really common. Often I didn't fit in. And with that came a whole host of feelings, especially the push pull of ambition coupled with the feeling of, I don't fit in. Maybe I'm a fraud. So this is one of the reasons that we're talking about this today is because I have lived it. Imposter syndrome and I have become very close friends. So let's start with what exactly is imposter syndrome? It's that feeling that you're a fake, that you're a fraud, that you're just making things up as you go along, but everyone else around you knows what they're doing. You worry about your accomplishments. You think they're a fluke. You spend a lot of time faking it on the outside. But on the inside, you have this gnawing, worrying feeling. So no matter what you've done, what you've accomplished, there is often a little voice in the back of your head saying, I'm pretty sure somebody's going to catch up with you. And then they are going to tell the entire world that you have been faking it all this time. People who experience imposter syndrome think that many of the successes they have, they are a result of plain old luck. They just were in the right place at the right time. They secretly suspect they don't deserve the success that they have, and they're just waiting for the shoe to drop for that embarrassing revelation. So it's a little bit different than self-doubt. It's kind of like self-doubt, but it comes with an extra helping of waiting for the fraud police to come and let everyone know that you have been faking it all this time. So why is this important? The real reason is I talk about this because people are suffering. And when they suffer, they feel alone, like they don't fit in, like the odd man out. And then they shrink and pull back and they dull their shine. They don't share their ideas. They don't raise their hand. They don't share that thought leadership. They don't share their creations or their inventions or ideas. Imagine 
how many contributions the world has lost because of imposter syndrome. The ironic thing is if the shoe was on the other foot, meaning if you were listening to a close friend and they told you that that was how they felt, you would never for a minute doubt their capability. You are certain that they are smart enough, skilled enough, and they completely deserve every success they have, but not you. There's something wrong with you. There's a mistake and you don't deserve it. So you feel that different opinion, right? If it was somebody else, it makes total sense. You would never doubt them. But inside, when people are experiencing imposter syndrome, they doubt themselves. So if any of this sounds familiar, let me welcome you to the club. And guess what? It's a massive club. It has been found that more than 70% of us have experienced imposter syndrome. 70%. It's amazing, right? Almost three quarters of us. But so often it's this isolating thing. We hide it and we feel like they're the only ones. So what's the impact of this? It shows up in us playing small. It may also show up as overthinking, overanalyzing, people-pleasing, procrastination, and perfectionism. The impact is you shrink or hide. You don't show up. You don't speak up. You don't contribute. You don't ask for the sale. You don't invite somebody to be your client. You don't put your hand up and ask to be a guest speaker. You don't invite people to work with you. You don't collaborate and connect. And you don't reach out to some of those brilliant people that you look up to. So when you're in the clutches of imposter syndrome, you spend a lot of time thinking about yourself and how you feel. And because of this, you also step on your own greatness. You squash your potential. So now there's a big difference between being a fraud and being new and learning and making mistakes and growing. So let me tell you about this thing with Maya Angelou. So this is a story from about Maya Angelou. And she is quoted as saying that she said this, I have written 11 books, but each time I think, uh oh, they're going to find out now. I've run my game on everybody and they are going to find me out. She was a Nobel laureate and she still experienced imposter syndrome. So what about you? What can you do? How can you help yourself when you know that from time to time, this is common for you too? How do you replace that feeling like a fraud with a more realistic view of your skills, your strengths, and your weaknesses? Well, you start with the realization that it just doesn't disappear overnight. You got to work at it. You're not going to listen to this steps and magically never experience imposter syndrome again. But I've got this great acronym, SMILE, where each of the letters of the word SMILE gives you a step-by-step -step approach to managing imposter syndrome. So let me just tell you what they are quickly, then I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into them. So the letter S, it starts with SMILE, starts with an S. S is for sharing. Break the silence by sharing how you feel. M is for makes. Sometimes it makes sense to feel like a fraud. I is for your internal dialogue. Develop a new internal script. L is for look. Look for the positive. Look for the evidence. And E, E is for the emotions. Emotions are not facts separate emotions from fact. So let's start back at the beginning, the S of smile. S is for sharing. Break that silence by sharing. So shame keeps a lot of people from just fessing up about those fraud feelings. Knowing sometimes that there's a name for these feelings and that you're not alone can be super freeing. Remember, almost three quarters of us have suffered from this imposter syndrome at some point. So it's really not a big a deal as you'd like to pretend. When you suffer from imposter syndrome, it's easy to isolate yourself. So instead, take action. One of the fastest ways to dissolve that fear 
is to share it with a friend or a peer that you respect. And in that process of sharing, you're going to find that you feel understood. Your friend will be able to support you and remind you that you too deserve the success that you're experiencing. They're going to remember and they're going to remind you of all those times that you spent time learning, that you spent time practicing, that you spent time researching, that you spent time doing the work. They're going to remember those things when maybe you've forgotten. So the second letter M of the SMILE acronym is for makes sense. Sometimes it makes sense to feel like a fraud. Hear me out here. So recognize what this might be. A sense of belonging fosters confidence. Now, if you're the only one or one of a very few people in a meeting or a workplace who look or sound much like you, it's only natural. Sometimes you're going to feel like you don't fit in. So it makes sense that maybe you don't feel like you quite fit in. Plus, if you're a person of color, a person with a disability, or a person where you're the first to ever achieve that in your family, in your community, there is this added pressure that goes with it. So instead of taking your self-doubt as a sign of being inept, recognize it might be a normal response to being on that receiving end of a social stereotype about competence. So that is a pretty common thing. Sometimes it just makes sense that you feel like an imposter because you don't look like somebody in that room. It doesn't mean that you have to stay there. When you understand that, it is easier for you to manage it. So the I, we've talked about S, we've talked about M, we've talked about the I of the SMILE acronym. Develop a new internal script. So start to become aware of the thoughts going in your head. Aware of your internal conversation. When you're in a situation that triggers your imposter feelings, notice what's going on in your head. These thoughts are the reason that you feel like an imposter. When you shift your thoughts, even slightly, you're going to change how you feel. So a new th thought is going to help you create a new emotion about it. And your thoughts, if they shift just a little, it can make a ton of difference. All you need to do is shift to the place of where you think, oh, yeah, that actually makes sense. Yeah, that it isn't that bad something that's a little bit more neutral. Here are some common thoughts that you may have and a reframe to neutralize some of those fraud feelings. So instead of thinking this, wait till they find out I've got no idea what I'm doing. Instead, you could try something like this. Hey, it's normal to feel uncomfortable. I'm starting something new. Or you could try something like this. I may not know all the answers, but I'm smart enough to figure them out. If you're in a space where you're feeling a little intimidated, instead of looking around that room and saying to yourself, oh my gosh, everyone here is so brilliant and I'm not, you could shift that internal dialogue like this. Instead, you could say, wow, everyone here is so brilliant. I am going to learn so much. So that's a way to approach it, a slight shift in your internal dialogue, something that's a little bit more realistic is going to diffuse some of those imposter feelings. The letter L stands for look, look for the positive, look for the evidence. The good news is that if you've got high standards and it's going to mean that you're feeling really deeply about the quality of your work. So look at the evidence. What projects have you worked on that others have benefited from? What work have you done that people have really appreciated and found useful? Approach how you feel from a more logical perspective. So oftentimes, people who suffer from imposter syndrome, they really want to do a great job. So notice that because you really want to do a great job, and you probably also have pretty high standards, that is one of the ways that you're also making that imposter feeling stronger. So instead of discounting what people say to you when they say, oh gosh, that was so helpful, do something else. Here's a hint. 
you could create a success file. That's where you're going to capture all your achievements, collect copies of thank you notes and compliments and testimonials. You can do it electronically, of course, or you could actually have a paper file where you collect these things that way. On those days where you're just really feeling like a fraud or you're really riddled with self-doubt or you're feeling like an imposter, go to your success file. Prove to yourself that it's not as bad as it seems. Remind yourself of the things that you have done that have worked out so well. Remind yourself of the place where you've really made that impact by looking at your success file. And finally, the letter E. E is for emotions. Emotions are not facts. So let's separate feelings from fact. Sure, there's times that you're going to feel kind of silly, kind of stupid. It happens to everyone from time to time. Realize that just because you may feel silly or feel stupid, it doesn't mean that you are. Feelings can be shifted. They shift as we shift our thoughts and as we shift our awareness. The first step to taking back your power is awareness. And so the way to do that is this. You start by number one, identify your automatic thought. And then number two, you question it. So number one, identify your automatic unconscious thoughts by using journaling. A specific kind of journaling called a brain dump or a thought download where you grab a blank piece of paper and you write every thought that's in your mind. You write everything that's on your brain that is worrying you right now. You're going to find that you have a whole host of thoughts. Many of them are conflicting, some are more positive than others, but all of them are running through your mind. Then number two, now that you've got this piece of paper filled with these thoughts, question them. It's easier to go one by one. You could use questions like, gosh, what would I say if a friend shared that with me. Or you could say, is this really true? Or you could ask yourself, can I see how this might not be 100% true? You could ask, am I exaggerating? Am I letting my imagination run away with me? And so by taking those thoughts, putting them on paper, and then looking at them, and actually getting curious about them, noticing from a logical perspective, are they really true or not? You're going to find that it's much easier to shift your thoughts and shift how you feel. So again, the smile approach to managing imposter syndrome is a five letter word, five letter acronym. So anytime you're finding that you're struggling with imposter syndrome, take the smile approach, start with the S, Break the silence by sharing how you feel. The M is sometimes it makes sense to feel like a fraud, but then you're aware. The I is for your internal dialogue. So develop a new internal script, how you talk to yourself. The L is for look. Look for the positive and look for the real evidence. And E, E is for emotions are not facts. You can separate the emotions from facts. Well, that's it. And I hope you find this helpful. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I really look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thanks again for listening today. Please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, I would love to hear from you. Did something that I say resonate? What else would you like to learn about? Click the link in the player and leave a comment on the post. This is going to give me great ideas for future episodes so I can help you best. Join me again next week for more coaching, support, and teaching to help you become the confident coach you are meant to be.